the Quran is this revelation from the same Lord, same Allah that revealed the Bible to Jesus, the Torah to Moses, the, the Psalms, Psalms to David. But we believe the Bible has been corrupted. And, and corrupted in what way? Um, corrupted, you know, where, where, where passages were taken out, things were put in, numbers were changed. So, for example... Wouldn't that be similar in, in uh, mm -hmm. when, when Muhammad took out the, uh, the satanic verses from the Quran? There is no satanic verses in. No, there isn't. Can you give me a reference, please? Well, no, I can't give you a reference. Okay. Can you go home, did, look it up? When I did cross reference uh, online regarding. Quran. Okay. So the, the issue with cross referencing. Because yeah, yeah. you said that it was corrupted. Sure. Let me explain the satanic verses issue. Right. The Quran has never had anything but what it has in it. This idea of satanic verses that Sulman Rushdie became famous by writing a horribly written book on is based on what's called a fabricated hadith. We call it in Arabic, mawdu'a. Mawdu'a means that it doesn't have a, a chain of narrations mm -hmm. going to the Prophet, peace be upon him. So this was a fabrication. Now, why, would they, why would they fabricate it? Oh, so there are many people who converted or seemingly converted to Islam or reverted to Islam, but they were people who were in their hearts enemies of Islam. So they would try to act as they are Muslims and then make fabrications. I mean, I can tell you, when recently you can look up Lawrence of Arabia and the stuff that he caused in the Middle East for political cause. Right, right. But the Muslim scholars, what we did is we look at the chain of narrations. Okay, if you say the Prophet said something, peace be upon him, who did you hear from? Where did they live? How was their memory? Who else heard it? So this is called Jarh wa Ta'adil. This science preserves the Quran and Hadith and all of that. So no Muslim in the world that you will ever meet a Muslim Okay? I'm not talking about somebody who claims it, but then he thinks he's right, right. something else now. We'll believe in the Quran other than this. Shia, Sunni, everybody has one Quran. 114 chapters, 30 sections, 30 juz. Right. 100, begins with Fatiha, ends with Nas. So, 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 the, right. so the narration about satanic verses is a fabrication. The story of the satanic verses. Christian apologists, they love this story. Right? They think it's the greatest thing since the book of Galatians, right? They think, they think it's the greatest thing since sliced, sliced bread at Holy Communion. So, so, so as, the, as the story goes, when the prophet was in Mecca, he was reciting Surah to Najm. Have you not seen these three, Alat and Al-Uzza and Manat? These were considered to be goddesses among the, the, the pagans. And then Satan apparently whispered two false verses to the prophet which he thought were divine revelation. You know, these are the high flying cranes whose intercession is to be sought. Um, and eventually the prophet, the Muslims, and all of the idolaters prostrated. Word then spread that the prophet had compromised with the idolaters. And, but then Gabriel informed the prophet and those verses were removed from the Quran. So that's sort of the basic story. Now, Christians, they point out that this story of the satanic verses, it must be true because it fulfills the criterion of embarrassment, right? They say, why would a Muslim invent this story? Why would a Muslim invent a story that embarrasses the prophet? Now, why would a Muslim make the Muslims fabricated hundreds and hundreds of hadith, okay? Kitab al mawdu'at right? The book of fabricated hadith. So these verses, Muslim scholars refer to it as Qissatul Gharanik or something like that, not only clashes with the Quran and the Sunnah, but also clashes with reason. Who fabricated these hadith? Jews? Christians? No, Muslims. Muslims in the past foisted lies upon the Prophet. This is a fact. It's a sad fact, but it's a fact. Why did they do this? For various reasons. People wanted to justify their own theological or political positions. People wanted to justify their immoral behavior for selfish reasons. I mean, we can flip the tables on the Christian here or ask a Christian, who wrote the infancy gospel of Thomas? And they'll say heretics. Well, what was their religion? They were Christian. Why did the Christian authors of the infancy gospel of Thomas write that Jesus as a child killed another child? and then murdered one of his teachers. According to the criterion of embarrassment, this must be true. I mean, why would a Christian invent the story, right? So I think they would get the point.